Great, so welcome to the next FitSit class. Have a nice, um, fun, well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully fun lesson for you. So, but just by way of a little bit of a warm up, um, please just have your arms comfortably down by your side and then just begin to lift your shoulders towards the ears and then just let them fall away from the ears. So just bringing the shoulders towards the ears and then just letting them fall away from the ears and then once more just lifting them up and just letting them release away from the ears and then the next time bring the shoulders up towards the ears try to roll them forward and down and then squeeze them together behind you again come up towards the ears forward and down try to squeeze them together behind you and then just once more in this direction and then reverse just just be careful as you're making these circles that you're not lifting the elbows trying to lead them so it's really just the shoulder blades squeezing together behind you and down and once more forward up towards you as you squeeze them together and down and then last time in this direction and then release and then bring the fingertips onto your shoulders if possible and just try to circle the elbows together and then you take them wide apart so just trying to bring them together even if they don't touch you have that intention and then you take them as wide as possible so what's happening here is as we're bringing the elbows together it's just sort of uh, opening out the area between the shoulder blades and then as the elbows go wide it's a nice opening for the chest and then just reverse the direction of the circle so nice easy breathing just checking the jaw is nice and relaxed and then one more time and then release just have that hands on the thighs and then with your right hand just begin to stroke down the right lower leg and then come back up so the other hand is just giving you a little bit of support you're just reaching down the lower leg some of you will be able to easily reach the foot and the floor but you're just going to where you can comfortably go and then begin to slide the leg to the out down the outside of the leg and then to the inside of the leg and then once more to the outside and then to the inside Good. and then pause bring your attention to your left hand on the left knee so I should say that I'm mirroring and, and begin just to slide the left hand down the leg just a couple of times so let the head go as you do this and then and begin to go down the outside of the leg and then the inside of the leg just trying to keep your hand as soft as possible and then once more down the outside of the leg and then down the inside of the leg and then pause and this time bring the right hand onto the left leg and then again just begin to go down the leg a few times the front of the of the leg wherever you can comfortably reach without holding the breath or stiffening the jaw and then go down the outside of the leg if possible and to the inside of the leg and then just down the back of the leg to the back of the the shin and then return and now bring the left hand onto the right knee and again just begin to go down the front of the leg a couple of times just as if you're caressing yourself down towards the foot and then go to the outside of the leg and then to the inside of the leg and then once more to the outside and you can probably feel uh, one of the reasons we're doing this is just getting the back and the ribs to move a little bit of shift of weight um, in different parts of the sit bow good and then pause bring your attention to your right knee and begin just to move the knee as we did last week and the week before a little bit from side to side so just a, not a big movement just um, moving the knee from side to side and just becoming aware that this is really a movement in the right hip joint but you can feel the shift of pressure underneath the foot 
and then pause and then do the same with the left knee so just going a little bit from side to side might be very different on this this hip joint compared to the other just enough to feel the shift of pressure to the outside and to the inside of the foot and then pause and bring your attention back to the right knee and, and, and the right leg. Can you keep the knee fairly still in space as you lift first the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot? So lifting the big toe side and then the little toe side. So we're changing the pressure underneath the foot but more as a result of a movement in the ankle joint rather than a big discursion in the hip joint. So just a few more times lifting the big toe side and then the little toe side. And then pause, bring your attention to your left leg and then begin to see can you lift the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot keeping the knee more or less still in space. Good. And then pause and begin just to curl your ten toes under as if you're trying to pick up some tissue paper and then just release the toes. So you're just curling the ten toes under and then just releasing them trying to create space in the toes and once more just curling the toes under and then release. Good. And now just imagine that your foot, your right foot, is like the letter V, the V, and the bottom of the V is where the heel is, and you have the two sides of the letter V, uh, a, v a, v a V shape, and then think of the two sides of the V coming together on the floor, and then release. So you just think of the two sides of the V creeping towards each other so you're just narrowing the width of the foot and then release and then once more just think of the two sides of the V coming closer together you feel it works a particular transverse arch of the foot and then release and then bring your attention to the left foot think of this letter V and then begin just to, as if you're bringing the two sides of the V closer together and release once more just trying to bring the two sides of the V together and release and then a third time and release and now do both feet so I suppose it would be a W but <laughs> think of the two sides of each V coming closer together and release and just as you're doing this a few more times you might feel actually something in the area of the pelvic floor um, sort of responding to the two sides of the V coming closer together, good, and then release. And then just bring your right foot slightly forward, lift the front of the foot, and then think you're just turning the dials of a clock with the big tape. The clock's just resting on the floor in front of you and allowing the movement to travel into the knee and into the hip and then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. And now think of the little toe side of the foot turning the dials of that clock. Good. And then just reverse the, that turning, again thinking of the little toe side of the foot um, leading these circles. Good. And then pause, bring your left foot slightly forward, lift the front of the foot, and then just think you're turning the dials of this imaginary clock with the big toe. So really just letting the knee respond and you'll feel how the movement just travels into the hip joint. And then just reverse the direction of these circles. Good. And now switch to the thinking of the little toe side of the foot leading the movement. And then reverse that again, still thinking of the little toe side of the foot leading the movement. Good. And then pause, just bring both legs, um, both heels underneath the knees. And then just bring your attention to your right heel. And can you just lift the heel high? So just lifting the heel high and then put it back down. So you're keeping 
as though you're wearing a high heel, just lifting the heel and then putting it back down and then lifting it. And you can feel it's as though the heel is sliding up the back of the leg to the back, back of the knee and then bring it back down and then just once more. So just sort of working the calf muscles a little bit and then release. And then do the same with the left heel. So just lifting the heel high and then release. Just lifting it high and release. Good. And then just once more, lifting it high, release. And now do once the right heel, put it down. The left heel, put that down. Once more, right heel and left heel. Good. Right heel and then left heel. Good. And then just take a rest for a moment. So, um, a couple of weeks ago, we focused, um, you're probably all getting very good at this now, on the issue of um, side bending. And you remember, rather than tilting, meaning our balance would be very precarious, we explored the possibility of shifting the weight onto the left sit bone and then coming back. And we explored the way to do that, or one way to do it, is to you can press into the right foot so that the right hip lifts a little bit and your weight pours down into the left sit bone and then you come back. So thinking of the right side of the pelvis lifting to bring the weight into the left sit bone. And then we also thought that you can include the idea of the ribs as part of this, moving to the left so they're just like an old-fashioned typewriter carriage, just moving to the left. And then also the idea of, as part of this, the left shoulder goes to the left and slightly up. So we get this side-bending action in the, in the spine. So just once more to the left and then come back. They're really uh, trying to initiate this from the pelvis, but including this idea of the ribs moving and allowing the right shoulder, the left shoulder to go to the left and slightly up as the right one goes down and then come back. And then uh, pause and let's explore that to the, to the right. So you think of pressing down gently into the le left foot, so the left side of the pelvis lifts and then lowers. And the weight, you can feel, if you're a scales, the weight is pouring down into the right sit bone. But we're doing this through side bending, allowing the ribs to move to the right and to, for the right shoulder to go to the right and slightly up. And uh, if we do it through this side bending, it means we're more easily able to keep the head floating in the middle so that we're able to scan our horizon as, as we do this. Just pause and then let's just go from, just explore going from one side to the other. So think of bringing the weight into the left sit bone, allowing the ribs to move and the shoulders to respond. And then can you come back, think of allowing the pelvis to lead the way and then bringing the weight onto the, the right sit bone and then come back. So just going from one side to the other and now that we're getting more proficient in this it's really thinking of initiating it from the pelvis from side to side and then pause, just let's use that um, to just walk back to the back edge of the chair. So you bring the weight onto the left sit bone, think of your right knee sliding back a little bit, you transfer the weight onto two sit bones, pour the weight down into the right sit bone to slide the left knee back, bring the weight onto two sit bones, come onto the left sit bone, take the right knee back, and so on and so forth 
until you arrive towards the back edge of your, your chair. <clears throat> Just taking a little rest in the back of the chair. And then begin to come forward again. So pour the weight into the right sit bone. Let the left knee come forward. You come onto two sit bones, transferring the weight onto the left sit bone, letting the right knee come forward. So just practicing our ability to walk through weight transference rather than tilt, tilting to come to the front of the chair. And then you remember last week we uh, looked at the issue of flexion and extension of the spine. And do you remember we had the fingertips on the, on the forehead to just get this idea of extension and um, you, it was just the thought of the elbows going slightly forward and up as you look up and then slightly down in an arc towards the tummy as you look down. So you just think of the elbows going slightly forward and up and then as so though they're going in a little arc arc towards the tummy and you remember it was important to think about can you keep the alignment of your outer shoulder and the hip as you bring the elbows forward and up so that you get a nice even extension in the spine and equally as the elbows come down you're thinking of keeping the alignment of the outer shoulder to the hip so you get an even rounding rounding of the of the spine and then pause just rest the hands for a moment and then um, I just kind of wanted to show you show you that using my new teaching aid um, so uh, if you imagine you have um, in the where the tummy is and inside the chest sort of two of these footballs and you can have one hand on the lower tummy and one hand on your on your chest just just there and when you when you look down you think of these two balls rolling together slightly and when you come back, it's as though they're rolling away from each other so that, that you allow the lower tummy out and the chest to lift slightly. So it's a thought of how the front, the two balls roll a little bit together to help you round the back. And you think of those two balls rolling apart to help extend extend the spine. So just coming together as you round the back and then you think of them just rolling a little bit apart. So you allow the tummy to release to help extend extend the spine. We're so conditioned to hold the tummy in, but it's so important to allow it to, to move to help the back to lengthen and shorten. And then pause, just rest for again for a moment. And then because we have we've have got we've been able to move to the left and to the right and forward and back we've got the beginnings of a circle or a clock. So if you imagine that 12 o'clock is in front of you, um, can even be painted on the seat of your chair, and six o'clock is behind you, when you extend the spine, it's as though you're bringing the weight forward to 12 o'clock, and when you're rounding the back, thinking of that alignment of outer shoulder to outer hip, we're bringing the weight behind, behind you towards six o'clock. So extending the spine, 
we're shifting the weight to 12 o'clock and when we're rounding the back we're shifting the weight behind us towards 6 o'clock good and then just come back to the middle and then if we make the right hip 3 o'clock so 12, 1, 2, 3 and the left hip 9 o'clock 9 o'clock we can shift our weight first of all to 3 o'clock to the right come back and then to 9 o'clock towards the left so once more to 3 o'clock to the right onto the right sit bone we come back and then we shift the weight down into the left sit bone so we brought the weight over to, to 9 o'clock good so we can begin to put these hours of the clock together so if you allow the weight to come forward to 12 o'clock can you begin to move the weight round to 3 o'clock so you go to 1 two, three, so the weight is in the right sit bone, and then can you come forward again to two, one, twelve o'clock, and then come back to the middle. So I'll just show that from one side, you're going forward to twelve o'clock, thinking of those balls rolling apart. Can you go from twelve o'clock round to three o'clock so you're on the right sit bone and then come forward so you have to allow the tummy to roll forward to travel round to twelve o'clock in that arched position and then come back to the neutral place so once more coming forward to twelve o'clock can you travel round your the imaginary hours of your clock to 3 o'clock, come back to 12 o'clock and then go back to 3 o'clock. So you're just trying to map out these hours of the clock really by using your pelvis, your pelvis to shift your weight in space and then come back to a neutral position. And then from this neutral position, can you go straight over to three o'clock to the right hip and then think of going back to what would be four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, so the back would be rounded, and then return to five, four, three, so you're over on the right sit bone, and go back to four, five, six, and see can you go again from six to five, to four, to three, so you're on the right sit bone, and back to four, five, and six, and then come back to the, to the middle. Just take a, a rest, rest for a moment. So um, what we're, you've heard me mention before, all your, just as you rest for a moment, is all your powerful muscles attached to the pelvis, your abdominal muscles, your back muscles, your leg muscles, your thigh muscles, the side, the hip muscles, the back of the legs, all attached to the pe pelvis. And um, for various reasons, our ability to coordinate the actions of those muscles sometimes gets a bit clunky and this idea of the clock is really giving us an external reference to really try and improve our coordination of these muscles to, to transfer our weight in, in space. And you might find <clears throat> as you're exploring some of these hours of the clock that some are not so clear to you some um, are a bit um, clunky or um, dampened but um, that will improve as the lesson goes on and the more 
you you practice practice this. But the important thing is always to make sure you're not holding the breath or tensing the the jaw. Just treat it as an exploration. So. Once more, when you are ready, come forward again to 12 o'clock. So you think of those balls rolling a little bit apart, keeping the alignment of the outer shoulder to the outer hip. And from 12 o'clock, can you again go round to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock onto the right hip and continue round to 4, 5 and 6. So we're not, you feel how the spine is short at six o'clock. And then can you go around again to five, four, three, continue to two, one, and 12, and then go back to one, two, three, four, five, six, and continue back to five, four, three, over on the right hip, two, one, and twelve, and then just come back to the, to the middle. So we're just mapping out this half of the clock to, to the side. Such a great, um, sometimes I work with um, people who are horse riders who have had injuries, and um, uh, one of the ways, I, I'm not a horse rider at all, but one of the ways you communicate with the horse is through the pelvis and the way that you shift weight. A great lesson for those who are horse riders, but for those of us who aren't, it's also practicing the ability to use our suspension system so that our head and eyes stay undisturbed by everything else that's going on underneath it. You think of the pelvis as a as a gyroscope. So once more, please come forward to 12 o'clock. So you open, roll those imaginary balls away from each other. And then from 12 o'clock, can you again go around to one, two, three, four, five, six, and then come straight through the middle to 12 o'clock and go around to one, two, three, four, five, six, straight through the middle to 12 o'clock, and then again round this particular half of the clock. So round from 12 to three to six, and again come to the, to the middle. And just pause, just take a, a rest for a moment. And we better look at the other, other half of the, of the clock. So, can you come forward to 12 o'clock again? So think of those balls just gently rolling away from each other. And from the 12 o'clock position, can you begin to go round to the left towards 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock? So we're on the left hip joint in that side bending. And can you come forward again to 10? 11 and 12, so you're in that slightly arched position, and then just come back to neutral. And then once more, can you come forward to 12? Think of going around to 11, uh, 10, 9, and back to 10, 11, and 12, and back to 11, 10, and nine. Just see, can you map out this quarter of the clock? Just noticing how some hours you begin to get smaller in the spine. As you go to other hours, you get taller in the, in the spine. Come back to the middle. And then from here, let's go to over to nine o'clock. So straight over to nine o'clock. So you're on the left hip joint. From there, can you go back round to uh, eight, seven, six. So back in six o'clock. And then can you go back to um, seven, eight, nine, back on the left hip and then back again to eight, seven, 
six and just see can you just trace these three hours from six to nine that's it just mapping mapping out these hours but again it's really how you're thinking of using the pelvis and the tummy that will enable you to coordinate these movements and then come back to nine o'clock and then just bring yourself back to the middle just take a rest again and then once you've had a rest could you come forward once more to 12 o'clock so think of those being those two balls rolling away from each other and then from 12 o'clock could you again go around to 11 to 10 to 9 continue to 8 7 6 and go back to 7 8 9 10 11 12 and then go back to 11 10 9 8 7 6 and once more go back to 7 8 9 10 11 12 and then just come back to the to the middle and then from here again from the middle because you again come forward to 12 o'clock so again you think of the those two balls just rolling a little bit away from each other and go around again to 11 10 9 8 7 6 come straight through the middle to 12 o'clock and then notice how they get taller to do that and go again to 11 10 9 8 7 6 come straight through the middle pushing allowing those balls to roll away from each other and then again just go round this half of the clock round to six o'clock and come through the middle and then once you come to a neutral place see if you can go back to six so those two balls just rolling slow, closely together and from six go to seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then come back to the middle so again, don't be surprised if there are some hours of the clock that are perhaps a little bit less less accessible um, so you're just giving yourself time to explore those areas uh, um, in, a, in a gentle way but now we have kind of explored the hours of the clock we're ready to explore a full circle so just have the hands comfortably resting on the thighs and then begin to come forward to 12 o'clock so you think of those two imaginary balls just rolling a little bit away from each other and then from 12 can you go around to one o'clock again to the right two o'clock to three o'clock continue to four five six seven eight nine on the left hip ten eleven twelve and continue around to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and just see if you can keep this going at your own pace checking you're not holding the breath just keeping the jaw nice and relaxed and keeping the head and up so the eyes in particular just floating perhaps on, uh, on the screen so that the movement even though every part of you is involved in making this clock you're still able to keep the your vision un, undisturbed and the breath und, undisturbed and then pause just come back to the middle and then um, see if we can go counterclockwise so you come forward to 12 and then think of going round to 11, 10, 
nine on the left hip joint, continue round from um, to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, twelve. And just see if you can keep this counterclockwise clock going. There's no hurry to do this, but just exploring your ability to transfer your weight in space around the hours of the clock. But just as you continue this clock in a counterclockwise direction, can you just bring your attention down to the feet and notice how the pressure, the weight, shifts underneath the feet depending on where you are on the on the clock. Good. Good. Just pause and take a rest for a moment. And then once more, come forward to 12 o'clock. Begin again to go in a clockwise direction round to one, two, three, four. Just keep this going in a clockwise direction. You're feeling how the ribs and the chest and the spine is their ability to soften that's part of this clock. And one of the things Feldenkrais always said that a good movement is one that you could reverse at any direction. So the next, wherever you are in your clock, reverse in a counterclockwise direction. So I'm at 12 o'clock now going round to 11, 10, 9, 8 and then reverse the direction again. Just, just go round the hours of the clock but being ready at a moment's notice or a thought's notice to reverse the direction of your clock. And pause, just notice how everything feels and just take a little walk back towards the back edge of your chair. Maybe that ability to organise that through the pelvis is a, a little bit easier. You, you can begin to understand once you explore a lesson like this, when you get the feeling of the ability of the system to adjust to keep the head and eyes floating, you can see why um, people get vulnerable to falls um, if, if the, the middle of the ribs aren't as, uh, aren't as ava available as they can. If the, everything is held like Boris, my model, then the ability to adapt to a change of surface, uneven ground, is compromised if everything is moving as a piece and that's why I think this is such a fabulous lesson for helping to practice this this ability of the spine to act in this way. Now let's refine it a little bit more. Please just bring your weight over onto the three o'clock position or the right hip and then come back. And then once more, bring the weight over on to the three o'clock or to the right hip. So my left sit bone is light and I can slide my fingers underneath there just to check that uh, I truly am on that three o'clock position. And this time, can you stay balanced over the, the right hip, the three o'clock position, and just make the clock about the size of a wristwatch, a large wristwatch on the right hip so that you can just practice coming forward to 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock but staying on the right hip. So what that looks like from the side, it won't seem too different but I'm staying on the right, right sit bone as I just explore 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And then you can do a little bit more to a three o'clock, six o'clock, uh, nine o'clock position here, just staying on that hip joint. And then you can begin to make a little circle 
circle around the right hip joint. Just whatever you can do, so it doesn't have to be perfect, just seeing can you stay a little bit more balanced on that right sit bone and then go in a counterclockwise direction but staying over on that right hip joint. And can you maybe even look around yourself to check that your head and eyes are not being disturbed by the movement. And then come back to centre you know, on two sit bones. And then can you bring the weight onto your left hip joint or the nut into the nine o'clock position on our larger clock. And then stay there and imagine the clock is now much smaller. And then can you do a few 12 o'clock and six o'clock movements staying on this uh, um, left hip joint. And then maybe even a few circles in space around this hip joint and then reverse the direction of those circles again um, it's probably I'm not very pretty to look at me <laughs> me doing them so again don't worry about it being perfect you're just thinking can you explore these still keeping the breath easy and the and the jaw nice and relaxed and then leave that alone, come back to centre. And then just return to our first clock, the clock. In, um, so you come forward to 12 o'clock, go around to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So just keep a clock going in your own time, just noticing when you're getting smaller, when you're getting taller. And then can you think of your clock, it's suddenly got a lot larger, it's maybe occupying the floor of your room, so you're just allowing the movement in the spine and the ribs become a little bit larger so you're reaching out to the hours of the clock Good. and then reverse reverse that large expansive clock and then begin to make the clock smaller and smaller so it sort of shrinks back to the size of your chair your chair just still coordinating the movement but making it less less large in space and then pause and take a take a rest now come back once you just had a, a brief rest remember the idea again of the two two balls so that I'll just show you from the side just begin to look up as you extend the spine and then look look down as you round the spine. So I'm, I'm trying not to just do this from the neck, far from it. Really just trying to, as I look up, that movement is coming because of how I'm moving the whole of my spine to look up and down. When you see a toddler or an infant moving, everything is part of the, the movement. They don't do this, this kind of thing. Pelvis is part of vision, the spine is part of vision. Just looking up and down. Good. And then pause. And then, so in that movement, we're arching to look up, arching the spine and rounding the spine to look down. So arching, arching and rounding. Now this time as you arch the spine can you look down with the head and eyes 
And as you round the spine, can you look up the head and eyes? So as you're extending the spine, spine you're looking down with the head and eyes, as you're rounding the back, you're thinking of looking up with the head and eyes. Now, don't you pause, just rest for a minute, and you'll see if you just look at me at the screen, I'm sure you know lots of people who sit at desks, watch TV, where this is the default position. The back is rounded, but they're extending. And, and it, the reason I ask you not to hold it is it can feel uncomfortable quite quickly. It's where they're, they're really just make, doing all the work in one part of the, of the neck. So once you just sort of recognise that, you can see if you can just come back to the first movement of looking down as you round the back and then looking up as you extend, extend, extend the back. And then pause. And now this time, just find a spot in your room that's directly in front of you. It might be above the, the computer screen. Just find a spot that you can keep your eyes focused on, that's level with you on the horizon. And then continue to extend the spine and the head, but stay with the eyes focused on that spot. And then round the spine and the head as you keep the eyes focused on that spot. So just extending the spine as you keep the eyes focused on that spot and then rounding the back and lowering the head as you keep the eyes focused on that spot. So just differentiating eye movements from everything else. And then pause, just take a rest. So um, one of the things that there's, uh, again, just whilst you're resting, I'll just explain. So when I, if I keep my eyes on the spot there in front of me, and I round the back, letting the head release, I'm actually having to, my eyes are above my glasses, and I can feel my eyes are right up in the upper part of the of the sockets. Uh, the, my, my eyes are sort of, trying to lift, lift my head, head effectively. And um, again, you might feel um, something, you might know people who uh, constantly, their vision, they, they're having to keep their eyes in the upper quadrant in order to be able to see direct, directly ahead. So one way of helping a person like that is to try and restore the mobility in the, in the spine to help with their, their vision. Please keep the feet and knees um, about hip distance or shoulder width apart. And then just turn yourself to, um, so that your chest bone, your breastbone, is lined up with your right, right thigh. And just have your two hands just resting on your right thigh. So slightly turned, navel chest is turned towards the right thigh and in this position can you again begin to round the back and spine as you look down and then push out the tummy think of those two balls coming apart to look look up so again you round the back to look down think of those two balls rolling together and then to look up, you think of those two balls rolling apart on top of each other to look up. And you'll just feel as you're doing this how the weight, when you round the back, is shifting to your left sit bone. As you allow the tummy to push out, the chest to lift, the weight shifts onto your right sit bone. So just doing that a few times, allowing the weight to shift to one sit bone and the other as part of the looking down and then the looking up. Good. And then pause, come back to centre and then 
shift the uh, turn yourself to look towards your face your left thigh and again just have the both hands resting on the left thigh and see can you round the back to look down and think of initiating the looking up from those two imaginary balls to look up and then looking down again so you're really I like the idea of the two balls, if you think about that, because it helps certainly me, hopefully you too, to really think that you're initiating this looking up and looking down from your middle, from your core. As we all get older, it's our core tends to go a little bit to sleep or offline. And really, what we're trying to do is initiate it, get it back online, so that we can really organise our movement from our centre, our centre. Looking down and then looking up. Good. Now pause, come back to centre. And then once more, just keeping the hands on the thighs, can you begin to make your clock? We're going to 12, round to 3, to 6, to 9, coming forward to 12, keeping the head and eyes floating, floating. Yeah. Imagine you're on a horse <laughs> or something, so, or on a boat, so to stop you getting seasick, the eyes and eyes float, ears float, but everything else is adjusting underneath you and then just reverse the direction of your clock. Still thinking of trying to keep that alignment of the outer shoulder to the hip. So it's really the movement of the spine and the pelvis that's um, shifting weight. And then pause, and then do you remember from last week, we did this movement where you interlace the hands and had them behind the back of the head. So your elbows are pointing slightly forward and then you begin to trace your clock, clock to move the elbows. So the elbows are tracing a circle in space but it's not because I'm moving the elbows independently, it's the elbows are being moved in space because of how I'm moving through my middle and then just reverse the direction of these clocks. clocks. Doesn't that feel gorgeous to, to do? Lovely to get the spine moving. Good. And then pause, just take a, take a rest. Just notice how everything feels. Again, don't again. If you found some of these hours of the clock challenging or difficult, don't be harsh on yourself. Just give yourself time to sort of pra practice them. It can be a great thing to do at a kitchen table or something where you keep the hands on the table and you're still exploring these clock clock movements. Um, if you need a bit more um, stability, so. I just encourage you, as we end the lesson, that when you come to walking and maybe in the week ahead to practice some of these movements, but also just can you begin to get a sense of how these movements of the pelvis and the spine are part, are part of your walk, walking, your ability to move through, through space. Hope you enjoyed the pelvic clock lesson and um, see you next week.